Okay, let's jump in today to our message and most importantly to God's Word. And I want to start by asking you a question, and the question is this. What matters most to you? What matters most to you? What is the center of your life? It's a big question. It's a heavy question. I want you to think about that question today as we talk. I heard a story about this woman, her and her husband, they had uh, tickets, season tickets to NFL, their favorite NFL team, and they'd go every game, and they would watch them, and uh, this new season came along, and they went to a few games together, and then one week, the wife shows up without her husband, so she sits down, and there's an empty seat beside her, and so some of the people around her are wondering, why is there an empty seat? The seats are always filled. What's up with this? Why is And so they asked the lady, said, where's your husband at today? And she said, oh, he passed away. And they said, oh, we're so sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry to hear about your, your husband. Are you okay? And they gave her their sympathies and condolences for a little bit, and then they said, now, now we just got to ask you, like, why did nobody else want to take that seat? Like, wh- why do you have a friend or a family member or somebody who would jump in there and sit with you? And she said, I was surprised too, but they all wanted to go to the funeral. So, <laughs> it's bad, right? That's bad. That's a, so, <laughs> it's obvious, right? When we, we hear a silly story like that, what was most important to that woman was what? The, the football game, right? Going to the game and watching the game. And, and we read that and we think that's silly, that's not real life. But the truth is it actually really is real life. Uh, we may not have season tickets to the football game that we would go to even uh, during a funeral. But we do things like that where we put things at the center of our life that don't deserve to be the center of our life. We make things the most important to us even when they don't deserve to be the most important thing in our life. And so we ask this question, what matters most to you? What is at the center of your life? Because I want you to question, what am I revolving my life around? What is at the center of who I am and what I do as a human being? And in Jesus' word, uh, Matthew 6, he kind of talks something similar to this, and I want to read this to you. This is our verse of the week. Uh, I encourage you to memorize and know and study this verse. Uh, this is a big verse. So Matthew 6, if you want to turn there with me, you can. If not, we'll have it on the screen here. Jesus says, in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, he drops this, this uh, gem for us. He says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Jesus tells us to seek first his kingdom, to put him number one. To help illustrate this today, what I want to do is uh, I want to bring out my my bicycle wheel. Now, I will tell you I settled to bring this wheel because what I wanted to do was ride my bike down the aisle, and my wife said... That will not end good for you. Somebody will jump out. uh, An older lady will jump out. A child will jump out. You'll hit somebody. It will be bad. Don't do it. So I just took the wheel off my bike, and I brought the wheel instead. But I want you to think about the wheel. The wheel is the only part I really needed. I want you to think about this wheel today, and I want you to think of your life like a wheel, okay? Think of your life like a wheel. Now, the wheel has many parts. We've got the inner tube out here. We've got a frame. We've got spokes. And then we've got the hub. And so think of your life like a wheel. At the center of this wheel is a hub. And the hub is the most important part of the wheel. We've got all these other things going on. We've got these spokes that are going on. And if you're thinking about your life like the wheel, you think about spokes. And what would be the spokes in your life? What are parts of your life like relationships, jobs, careers, family, hobbies, Uh, shopping, sports, whatever it is, you've got all these different spokes in your life, but they all come back to something, something that is at the center of your life, something that everything in your life revolves around, depends on. It either gets stronger because of what's at the middle or it gets weaker because of what's at the middle. So what is the hub of your life? What will you build your life Around What will all the spokes and the different parts and segments of your life rely on? What will give them strength or what will lead them to collapse? 
If you're asking that question today, what is my hub? What is the hub of my life? Rick Warren says the easiest way to find out what the hub of your life is is to ask yourself, what do I think about the most? What is on my mind the most? Because those things that we think about the most are what drive us. They are our hub. So what is it for you? Is it hobbies? Sports or shopping, whatever it is, hunting, maybe this time of year. Is it uh, relationships or maybe friendships? Good things, right? Is it your job, you know, your career? What's most important? What does everything else have to wait for and revolve around? Goals, money, or, or is the hub of your life Jesus? And I hope and I pray that, that it is, but, but I understand that at times Jesus isn't my hub. And he hasn't been my hub. And, and I understand with a room with this many people in there that some of you out there, Jesus probably isn't the hub of your life either. One of the saddest things I think of is that many people claim to be followers of Christ and they feel very secure in that. And they have a peace because of that. And they feel good. They feel like they've reassured themselves of, of their eternal space. Like Alex talked about last week, you know, they've reassured themselves of time in heaven when they're done. But, but Jesus wants to give us so much more than that. And so I know many followers of Christ or so-called followers of Christ who say, Jesus is the center of my life. He is the hub of my life. Uh, but yet the way that they live demonstrates that in fact, Jesus is not the center of their life. Jesus is not what it all revolves around. Jesus is maybe a spoke. He gets a, he gets a day a week, and then the week goes around, and he gets a day of the week. And, or maybe he just gets a, you know, a couple hours, so maybe he's a, just a part of the spoke. But you get the point. Now, if you're going to ask my opinion, and I think I could back this up biblically, that I don't know if you're a follower of Christ if Jesus isn't the center of your life. For me, it's always a pursuit. As I said earlier, some days uh, Jesus is, is more at the center than others. Uh, but it's a pursuit for the follower of Christ, that Jesus Christ would always be the center of our life, that he would be what everything revolves around. You see, the, he, the, the hub is key. It's key to all the spokes. It supports them. It gives them stability. If you have a hub that's not fit right, your wheel's going to be all wobbly, right? You might be going in the wrong direction. Uh, you might be going absolutely nowhere at all. And that's what's going to happen if your hub isn't right. You're going to be crashing into things that you shouldn't crash in. You're going to be off balance and wobbly, stumbling through life. And maybe you feel like that right now. Maybe you feel like, man, my life's a wreck. <laughs> well, is Jesus the hub of your life? Maybe you're thinking, man, I, I'm, I'm like trying to go, but it's always so hard. And if your hub is off and your, your wheels are out of line, you're always going to be going to one side or the other, never able to truly go where you want to go. And so is Jesus the hub of your life? You see, when it comes to that hub of our life, a weak hub is going to lead to a weak life. And a strong hub is going to lead to a strong life. So what is the hub of your life. See, not only does the hub give stability to your life, but it also influences every other part of your life. These spokes, man, the relationships, family, career, goals, money, all these spokes, man, if I had an orange in the center of this bicycle wheel and I jumped on my bike to go ride in, do you know what would happen? Nothing. I would, I, my wheel would collapse, I would crush, it would not go, I would not go anywhere. And many of us are trying to live our lives not with a solid, secure hub at the middle, but an orange, or maybe, or maybe some cash. We're trying to put all these things in the middle of our life and expecting it to go the direction it should go. And it's not going, because Jesus isn't at the center. And that's what being a Christ follower means. It means putting Jesus at the center. It means committing that your life is going to revolve around him. When we pray this, this prayer, uh, asking Jesus into our heart, we say things like, uh, Jesus, I want to ask you to be my Lord and Savior. And a lot of times we focus on the Lord, the Savior part. You know, yes, I want to be saved. Save me, Jesus. 
but we're also asking him to be our Lord. And what does that mean? Except he's our, he's our boss, he's our master, he's our king. And so if he's our king, then, then he's our center of our life. He's the hub, and he's the one we go to. He's the one we receive orders from. He's the one that our life revolves around. And as Christ followers, come on, church, we're not Christ followers if Jesus isn't at the center. And so let's put him at the center. And when you do that, he will impact every other part of your life. And I know some of you guys are saying, yeah, he'll impact every other part of my life. I won't get to have no more fun, Right? You've thought it. Maybe you're thinking it right now. Well, I want to tell you the truth of this is. That's, that's not how it works. You're thinking Jesus won't give you any more fun, but what Jesus is concerned is with your fulfillment. I see a lot of people out in this world, and they're having lots of fun, but you know what they don't have? Fulfillment. They don't have joy. And they don't have peace. But hey, they're having lots of fun for a little bit, and then there's nothing. There's nothing. I'm having lots of fun. I'm doing, uh, fulfilling all my fleshly desires. But then what happens? I'm empty. I need peace. I have no joy. I feel weak. I have no fulfillment in life. What's the meaning of all this? You're having fun. What's, what's wrong? That's what you wanted, right? Fun. But nothing else. And I'm telling you, following Jesus Christ, you can have all the fun in the world. I would, I would say that I laugh as much as anybody. I enjoy life, but I do it with Jesus at the center. I enjoy life, and I have fun, but guess what? I also have fulfillment, and I have peace when life is rough, and I have joy when life can be difficult. I have these things, not because I'm great or because I'm emotionally balanced or any of those things. I have that because of Jesus Christ at the center of my life. I have that because everything else revolves around him. And that's what we must do. We've got to put Jesus at the center. He's not trying to limit your fun. He's trying to maximize your fulfillment. And so we put Jesus at the center of our life, and he will power our life through his Holy Spirit. He will direct our lives. He will give stability to our lives. Having Jesus at the center causes us to think a little differently, okay? We think a little differently when Jesus is at the center of our life because we ask questions like, how would Jesus want me to treat this hateful person? How would Jesus want me to treat this hurting person? How would Jesus handle this situation? How would Jesus want me to care for my spouse, to love my kids? Or, or maybe for you kids in here today, how would Jesus want me to treat my parents? Are my, where are my kids at? Kids, listen. How would Jesus want you to treat your parents, you know, uh, respectfully? Very submissive, kids, very submissive. Uh, <laughs> amen, yes, Lord. Uh, how would Jesus want me to treat my friends? your friends at, at school, your friends at the park, your friends wherever you go? How would Jesus want you to treat your friends? How would Jesus want us to use our money? How would Jesus want us to spend our time? The list goes on and on. With Jesus at the center, we consult him and his word because we care about what he thinks. We care about his purposes because we desire his fulfillment. So do we care about more? Do we care more about what Jesus thinks? About the words that we say? Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Do we care more about what Jesus thinks or do we care more about what our friends think? About what we're wearing? About the words that we use? About the things that we see or watch on YouTube or wherever? Do we care more what other people think or do we care more what Jesus thinks? A Jesus-centered person, a person with Jesus at the hub, always cares more about what Jesus thinks. He puts him above all other people. Man, the kids need to come up every week. I'm getting <laughs> amens and yeses and answers, and I love it. The truth is this, that a strong hub will only strengthen the spokes. Now, we talked earlier about that, right? A strong hub strengthens the spokes. I believe this with all my heart. Listen, when I'm living with Jesus at the center of my life, I'm a better husband, 
I'm a better father. I'm a better friend. I'm a better employee. I am better in every area of my life when I am living with Jesus at the center. There's no doubt in my mind of that. You can't convince me any other way because I know me. And if I had it my way, you know what I put at the center? Me. I want to be the center of my universe. I want everything to revolve around me. Why? Because I'm a human being and I'm pretty selfish. But with Jesus at the center, it takes me out of the center. And it puts me in the place where I look to Jesus for how I'm supposed to live my life, how I'm supposed to treat other people, how I should forgive others who have hurt me, how I should love those who are hurting. It changes me. It changes who I am. It changes what I do and what I care about. It changes my perspective. It changes me, not because I'm awesome, but because I'm putting Jesus, who is awesome, at the center. And so Jesus needs to be your hub. He needs to be my hub. And it strengthens us in every other area of life. I want to read our verse one more time. Matthew 6, Let's look at it again together. It says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Let's break this down real quick, okay? We're, we're, getting, we're getting there. I don't know what time I'm at, but we're getting there, all right? Uh, hold tight. Seek first the kingdom of God. So Jesus says, seek me first. So if we seek him first, what does that mean? It means that we're going to prioritize spiritual things in our life. It means we're going to prioritize in our lives. We're going to make important the things of Jesus Christ in our lives. We're going to put him at the center. Make him the hub, not the spoke. So it means that we're going to have to do really practical things like I really want to play video games, but I haven't taken time to read my Bible today. So what should I do? Well, if Jesus is at the center, I'm going to step back and I'm going to say, I'm going to read God's Word first. I'm going to make sure I take time to study God's Word before I do these other things. Because if I say, no, I'm going to, I'm going to play video games even though I haven't read my Bible yet, what are we doing? We're putting video games at the center. Or, or how about this? Let's say, let's say I, I really want to go hunting or I really want to go shopping, whatever it is, right? I need to do, I want to do this thing, I want to do it right now, but I haven't, I haven't spent time praying or I haven't spent time helping other people or I really want to go shopping or hunting and I want to buy this, this new gun or this new bow or I want to buy this new makeup or these new shoes, but I haven't tithed in like six weeks. Well, when we put Jesus at the center, we say, man, I got to make time to pray, we put Jesus at the center, i got to make time to give. When we put Jesus at the center, we prioritize him over the other material things. And when we don't, what we are doing in a very practical way is we're saying, this hunting, games, shopping, family, relationships, work, whatever it is, we're saying that's the center of my life. And you might not say that, but when we live that way, we're, we're communicating that. To everybody else, yeah, but who cares what I think? Most importantly, you're communicating that to the God of all the universe. And so we have to put Jesus number one. We have to take time for him before we get busy with other things. And like, you're like, yeah, it's easy. You're a pastor, right? It's your job. I still struggle with it. But when you make it a priority, you make time for it. So Jesus says, seek him first. And the second thing he says, and all these things will be added to you. All these things will be added to you. So what's all these things? You know what falls under all these things? All the things you've been anxious and worrying about this week. Now look at me. Come on now. If you're human, you're like me. You've been struggling too, right? You've got some things that have been weighing you down this week. You've got some things you've been concerned about, you've been anxious about. And this is what Jesus is talking about in this text. He's saying, these things that you are worrying about, I got them if you will look to me. Let's look at this whole verse in context, and we're going to get real close here. Matthew 6, 25. We look at the verses that surround this verse where Jesus says, seek me first, and then all these things will be added to you. If we go back to it and we see what Jesus is talking about, we'll see what I'm saying is right, that, that Jesus is going to say, all these things you've been anxious about, that's what's going to be added unto you if you put me first. And Jesus uh, says in verse 25, read with me, therefore I tell you, don't be anxious about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you'll put on. Is not life more than food, 
and the body more than clothing, right? Life is more than that. Jesus said, look at the birds of the air, and they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. God takes care of these birds who are, you know, I mean, like, you may have had somebody tell you you had a bird brain before, but you, you don't, right? You're way wiser than a bird, way smarter than a bird, and God cares way more about you than he cares about the birds. And, and he says, are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow and they don't toil or spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Now he calls us little faith. Now hold on to that. We're going to go back to that in a minute. He says, therefore, don't be anxious saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles, these non-Christian, non-God relationship people, seek after all these things. And your heavenly Father, listen, he knows that you need them all. Can you soak that in for a minute? Just, Just, your heavenly Father knows 